I have a feeling I'm not in Florida anymore. Let's spend the day at Universal Studios Hollywood, where we've got one main thing on our agenda. I visit Universal Orlando all of the time, but this is actually only my third time stepping foot into Universal Studios Hollywood. I'm really excited to do some of the attractions we don't have in Florida, to see some differences in the attractions that we do, try some new food, well, new to me, see some characters. Let's just go have a great day. Now, Universal Studios Hollywood is a lot smaller than Universal Orlando. It does have a city walk, but it doesn't have more than one park. The main draw of Universal Studios Hollywood is the Studio Tram Tour, where you actually get to go on the Universal Studios lot, where they're often doing active filming. You can also see some movie sets and props from some very famous movies. Universal Studios Hollywood also is home to the Jurassic World attraction, which, even though it's a water ride, I was very sad to learn. It's close for refurbishment right now because I genuinely love it despite the fact that you get wet. The newest land coming to Universal Studios Hollywood is Super Nintendo World. That officially opens on February 17th. We did a whole video about Super Nintendo World. They're still in previews and we went on ours yesterday, but if you want to check it out, you can. Today we're going to be focusing again. We're going to do that Studio Tram Tour, see some of the shows, see what their Wizarding World of Harry Potter is like. Super excited. Walking to this park feels so different than walking into any other theme park, but especially Universal Studios Florida. Also, they just have prop cars around. This one was in The Mummy, the Brendan Fraser one. So that's cool. Oh, Beetlejuice. Hello, sir. There's also Lunar New Year Hello Kitty, who is so cute. I saw her uh, yesterday before our Nintendo preview. Isn't she so cute? There's also like the citizens of Hollywood hanging out of the window right here. Uh, it's so good to see you, by the way. You know, plants always have more fun, so you should come over. Make it That's what we say. Fun. Okay. Look at that little bum bag you got. Is that a shark? It's a shark. I love that yeah. so much. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank that. you. I love that. I love that. So cute, so cute, so cute. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Oh, wow. Do I love the citizens of Hollywood. I'll take them here. It don't have to be at Hollywood Studios in Florida. I'll take them at Universal Studios Hollywood. Oh, the Scooby-Doo gang is out. There are characters everywhere. I'm headed down this kind of classic, oh yes, it's who I was looking for. Oh my gosh. Okay, in Universal Studios Hollywood, they have classic monsters come out, like the Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster and Dracula. I met Dracula the other day, but look how cool this character meet and greet is. Oh my gosh. Hello. <laughs> look, you're in there. Look, you look beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, you look really nice. Yeah. You have a lovely bride here. You look very nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what a seriously, seriously cool meet and greet. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. They were like very curious about what I had in my hands, my camera, my, they just straight took my phone. So enjoy that footage. Um, and it's just a really cool experience. They were taking a long time with everybody. That's kind of the fun of coming to both Disneyland and Universal Studios Hollywood. So many of the guests are locals. So the pace of the parks is much slower. It's much more laid back and relaxed. Not everyone's like rushing around to get everything done. So the character experiences tend to last a long time but I love that. If you are here, make sure to come up here in the, the kind of France area near Minions um, and see Frankenstein or Dracula, who I met yesterday. Here's that clip. Molly. Yes. Thank you. Lovely, charming man. Thank you. I appreciate it. So what is it from the visit me from? Florida. Florida. All yes. this way just to see me. Just for you, Dracula. I am on Yes. Life. Can we take a photo? Yes, come, okay. my dear. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay, Dracula. I'm just gonna go this way now. Yes, yes. Thirsty. Yes. Say goodbye. <laughs> I'm keeping this one. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but for now, I'm headed in to get some coffee, maybe a little nosh in this little French bakery right here that I've enjoyed in the past. They do have Starbucks at the front, but I'm always a little, you know, when in France. 
do as the French do. We're in fake France, so it applies. Got myself a latte from the little French bistro. The way that Universal Studios Hollywood is laid out, it's bizarro. It's literally built into the side of a mountain on the Hollywood Hills. So there are actually escalators you have to take to get between the levels. And you're kind of trapped on that level unless you take a series of escalators to get to the next one. So we're in the upper lot right now. So you've got this kind of French themed street. You've got the New York themed area. You've got, we're moving into the illumination section, which is Minions and Secret Life of Pets. Uh, they actually built Super Silly Fun Land, which is the theme park they go to in Despicable Me. So there are some kitty attractions over here as well as some eats and games and things. They also have Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, the attraction they have at Universal. Universal Studios Florida up here. They also have the Minions Cafe, which is coming to Universal Studios Florida. Not sure if the menu will be the exact same, but we can take a little peek at it. It's things like a meatball Parmesan sandwich, pulled pork grilled cheese, classic grilled cheese, nachos. They've got really cute themed things like sippers and floats, a couple other dishes. Not sure what the menu will be like in Florida, but this is coming in the new Minions section, which is across from Despicable Me. They're also building in the new uh, shooter style game into that area. So we are getting our own Minions Cafe over there. I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna eat. Like I love grilled cheeses, but I think I wanna do something a little more adventurous, but just kind of giving you a glance of it in here. They have really cute desserts too. Like look at this little cookie. I also think I, I saw a Minion. Yeah, there's a Minion here. Should we say hi? He's right outside of uh, Miss Hattie's home for girls. So you can see the minion section is much more built up here. They actually have some of the themed areas from the movie. Hello, how are you? I wish I had a banana for you. Yeah, where's Groot? Where <laughs> The reason I came over here to start my day is I wanted to ride the Secret Life of Pets ride. It's one of the newer attractions here. And I was surprised and delighted to find Snowball the Rabbit up here, just interacting. He's just chatting with the crowd. He's talking talking to the audience. I love this park because I don't know that much about this park. Like I am a certified expert in the Florida parks and even Disneyland, but like this park is still a surprise and delight for me. And I didn't know he could be here. So this is so fun. What's up? never seen the secret life of pets but having ridden the ride one time yesterday and now meeting snowball i really want to see it it looks really cute but we are gonna head into the secret life of pets off the leash this is a dark ride theme to obviously the secret life of pets it does have a short height requirement of 34 inches so it's not completely family friendly but it's pretty close and it is y'all it is so cute it's one of the cutest dark rides i've literally ever been on and again i've never even seen this movie i have no emotional attachment to these characters but this ride is so cute so the story of this attraction is that you are a dog and trust me when you see yourself on the attraction you you really will be and you are getting judged up for adoption day with the help of the pets from the secret life of pets but I'm telling y'all, this queue is so cute. You weave through this apartment building in New York City where the story takes place. You go through all the different characters. You see all the different dogs and cats and creatures. Billy, I am terrible with faces. I have the memory of a hamster, which is weird because I'm a guinea pig. I don't even remember where my apartment is. I've been looking for it for the past three days. Have we had this conversation before? Look at this. Look who's in there. Who is it? Oh, the dog's having a party. I remember from the trailer that this movie is all about what your pets do when you're not there. And it's literally, this cue is so cute, I'm gonna watch the movie probably on my flight. And when I say this cue is cute, I'm specifically referring to this dog using the Cuisinart to scratch his butt, obviously. 
Wow! Look how many lost puppies there are, Max! Why am I so sad that I am a stray dog? Like, I know I'm not a stray dog, but I'm legitimately sad that I am. I wish I could have a home. Hey! You in the back! No chewing the furniture! See, this is the kind of thing that won't get you adopted. People do not like to have their stuff chewed. Okay, back to the plan. This is a map of the city. Believe it or not, I drew it myself. Okay, <laughs> look, it's a little abstract. But the point is, that's me. That's you. That's the pet store. This queue was legitimately so cute going through all the different apartments. I was laughing out loud at the animatronics. They're really good animatronics. And now I, as a dog, am gonna hide in a cardboard box so that Snowball the bunny can get me ready for adoption day. What cute ride vehicles. I legitimately think that Secret Life of Pets attraction is one of the cutest dark rides. Like, the animatronics are adorable, the story is really cute, I'm very happy a nice family did decide to adopt me as a puppy. A must do, and I can't wait to watch the movie now. Now I'm headed to Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but something sparkly has caught my eye over here. Wow, okay, this is the best day ever. I have a weird obsession with the trolls, specifically Guy Diamond. I think he's so cute, and I've never been able to hug him because of COVID protocol at Universal Studios Florida. My obsession began when I watched it with my nephews, um, and then when the characters came back at Universal Florida, they were like distance meet and greets, and then they were the dance party, so you could never actually like hug them, and I just got to hug Guy Diamond, and there's no one in his line. It was great. Okay, here's the weirdest part about Universal Studios Hollywood. IMO, besides the escalators, but we'll get there. It's very hard for my brain to comprehend that the Simpsons are right here. There's the Springfield sign. And then you've got like Despicable Me over here and then New York Street and then just, oh, wizards. I don't know why it's so weird to me. It's not as immersive, I guess, like clearly not as immersive Diagon Alley, which you literally can't even see till you go around the brick wall. But like, even compared to Hogsmeade in Universal Florida. It just feels like it's just like a movie set right here, not the Wizarding World. I don't know, it's bizarro to me, but let's go in here because they do have a few things that we don't have in Florida. So we're gonna go check those out. A couple Easter eggs and snacks and stuff. Now they only have Hogsmeade here. They don't have Diagon Alley and they don't have Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, which throws me off every time. Cause when I round this corner, I'm just like, oh, it's time to ride Hagrid. No, no, it's not here. Uh, they do have Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which is the ride inside Hogwarts, which is over this way. And they have Flight of the Hippogriff, which is that kind of smaller family coaster. They have the three broomsticks and several of the same shops. So it's very similar to Hogsmeade, but missing a few things. However, my wonderful friend Megan, AKA Miss Wizarding World, give her a follow on the socials, if you don't already, she, has shared with me some fun Easter eggs to look for that are only in this Hogsmeade, not in our Hogsmeade. And she told me about a cool experience you can do here that you cannot do in Orlando. So we are off to Ollivander's. So silly me forgot a wand. 
and I need a wand because I need to do magic because there's different spells you can do here and I'm a lunatic. So I decided I was going to buy a wand and then I was talking to my friend Megan. She said, did you know there's a special thing you can do with your wands here that they don't offer in Universal Studios Florida because it's too busy. So we are headed into Ollivander's to get a wand. The question is, whose wands do I get? Whose wand do I get? Oh my God. Okay. The gold ones are interactive. The non-gold labels are not. I have Sirius. I don't have Snape. Draco? I don't have Draco. I do like Draco. I actually have one in mind that I shockingly don't have yet. Theseus, Newt, Lita Lestrange. Oh, we're in the Fantastic Beasts section. We are in the wrong section, friends. Um, okay, Death Eater, generic. Voldemort, have that one. Harry. I don't have Harry, actually, but I don't think that's the one I want. Oh, Rufus Scrimgeour. Yes, please. JK. Oh, Luna would be good. Xenophilius Love Good. Molly Weasley. Arthur Weasley. Ginny. Obviously not Ron. Wait. Are these Fred and George interactive? Because... I don't think they have Fred and George interactive in Florida, and that throws my whole plan off. I bought my wand, leaving me with a dramatic cliffhanger as to which wand I picked and why it's special here, but I need a few minutes before I can get it. Let's go get butterbeer. I mean, I think we'll get butterbeer. Who knows? We might get into the hogshead, and they might have a fancy drink here that they don't have in Florida, and then I'll need to get that. There are no rules to our wizard excursion. But seriously, doesn't it throw you a little bit that you look out there and you see the production central side? This is how I justify it in my head because I'm a lunatic. Um, I think that this is the movie set of Harry Potter. I know it's not. I know it was shot in the UK, but in my brain, I justify the fact that you can see Production Central and it's right next to The Simpsons by saying, we're at Universal Studios Hollywood. We are in various movie sets come to life around us. So in my brain, I'm like, this is where they filmed Harry Potter. Again, I know it's not. But then, let's take it one step further, and my brain says, when you go to Florida, and you go to Diagon Alley especially, well, now you're really in the wizarding world, and you're a witch now. Should I speak to someone about that? Nah. First things first, on the way to the Hogshead, one of the Easter eggs I wanted to show you. Look in the window here of Dogweed and Deathcap, which is the exotic plant and flower location. They've got a mandrake, but here they have headphones to go with it. We don't have the headphones in Florida for some reason, but that's a cute little Easter egg because, of course, they scream. Flaps tight down and watch me closely. You grasp your mandrake firmly. You pull it sharp out of the pot. I went into Hogshead thinking I would get a hot butter beer, but I wanted to ask if they had anything that they didn't have in Florida. They actually have honey meat here, which you cannot get in Florida. You can get it cold year round, and it's kind of like a sparkling wine, or you can get it warm seasonally. So it's a little crisp day. Ooh, that is lovely. It tastes like warm honey and champagne, but like in a good way. It's, it's warm and cozy. It's not as sweet as butter beer by any means. That is lovely. Okay, we're going to continue our jaunt around. Might have to try the cold one too, just for science but I have a feeling it's gonna make me mad that this isn't available to me in Florida on the reg. Okay, continuing our little journey, because I know of a few more Easter eggs I wanna find here in Glad Rags, which you can't actually go in in Universal Florida. You can't go into Glad Rags, it's just a storefront, but they do have Madame Malkin's and Diagon Alley you can go into, same vibe. Outside here, you'll see they're working on Hermione and Harry's looks from the Yule Ball, which you can see in Florida, but there's a couple dresses you can't see except for here. If you look up right there, you've got Floor's dress and Ginny's dress right here and Cho Chang's dress right here. Oh, that's Molly Weasley's knitting. Oh. The friendly wizard told me that Cho's dress here was screen used. The other two up here, Flora and Jenny, weren't screen used, but they were made for the film as backups in case anything happened to the dress. And then this Molly Weasley knitting doesn't move. There is one in Florida that does, but this one would have been used for like lighting effects um, and setting the scene in the movies. So Ooh, I just love looking around at all this stuff. Moved our way into Ilops. Oh, I hear the monster book of monsters. Oh, hello, little owls. <laughs> He's snoring now. I don't want to wake him. He's not very nice. 
not going to ride Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which is the attraction inside the castle today. It is the same as the one in Orlando. I love this attraction for how much Harry Potter there is in it, and I love the queue. So definitely check out the Secrets of Harry Potter videos or the Harry Potter videos I've done in Orlando where I walk through the queue and show all the Easter eggs and the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom and Dumbledore's office and just walking through the castle. And then on the attraction, you're going to encounter... Aragog in the Chamber of Secrets and Dementors and Dragons and Quidditch and it's so beautiful and fun but it does upset the old tum and I don't want to do that on a day where I still gotta go see my best friend. I am however headed into Filch's Emporium which is the gift shop at the exit. It's Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods and there's some more Easter eggs I'm on the quest for. All right, I'm looking for these black boxes because I was told that they have students' names on them, which we don't have this Easter egg in Florida. So let's see. Looks like Colin Creevy and Dean Thomas. If I had to guess, Colin Creevy's is definitely a camera. Ron Weasley. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. You know about who doesn't have a box in here? Hermione. Luna. Oh, what would get confiscated from Luna? Maybe the Quibbler. <gasps> I bet the Quibbler from, from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Poor Neville. Ginny Weasley. I wonder how many Fred and George have. Padma Patil. Cho Chang. Here you go. George Weasley. I bet this isn't his only box. That's Fred Weasley behind the register. Well, color me shocked to see that Fred and George only have one box each. That we can see. I, I'm sure they have a whole file cabinet somewhere else that is unavailable. But that's a really fun Easter egg. Ooh, it is blustery. A fun thing you can do when you go into Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods is talk to the students in there and ask them why they got detention. So technically, they are all serving detention. That's why they're working in Filch's Emporium. You know, they could be writing lines or scrubbing bedpans or helping out Snape in the dungeon or worse, you know, go into detention with Umbridge. But if you ask them what they did to land their spot in detention, it's pretty funny. I've never done that in Orlando, so maybe I'll have to try. But fun thing that I did here. Jessica, why are you in detention? Um, pretty much I was casting spells in the uh, off property and stuff. So it was like Mr. Filch, you know, well actually he was kind of nice to me. So he asked me like if I want detention. So I was like so happy to join. So I'm just kind of promoting his little collectible stuff there too. So you're helping Filch? Well, almost, but it's like, you know, it's just like we're kind of like, you know, in detention. So it's like, you know, we're just at the light. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, just work, just work with everything. I understand. That's very Gryffindor but, of you. Yeah, but yeah. this is also just like, you know, like, <laughs> at least, at least, at least we're not writing down the whole essay. Sure. Like, that could be much worse. I went to the Forbidden Forest looking for the unicorn. Did you find it? I did not. Oh, but you got detention for it? Found me. Oh, oh no. Find That's a bummer. <laughs> I was living on fireworks in the Weasley fireworks in the grape. Oh. I accidentally put a sleeping potion in my professor's drink. Accidentally? Yeah. Not yeah. purpose. I know. You're a Slytherin. I get it. I'm a Slytherin. So I feel you. And now I'm headed just hopping into the queue of Flight of the Hippogriff for a couple other little things to look for. So Flight of the Hippogriff is kind of your kiddie family coaster here in the Wizarding World. They have this one in Universal Orlando too. Oh my gosh, but I can hear all these little creatures. I think there's some pixies in the forest. Can you hear them? Basically the same attraction, but obviously we are on an Easter egg quest right now. For starters, here parked outside Hagrid's hut, you will see his famous motorbike. Of course, it was originally Sirius Black's motorbike, and after Voldemort killed James and Lily, Sirius decided to go after Peter Pettigrew, and he bequeathed the flying motorbike to Hagrid to bring Harry to Dumbledore. So there's the magical motorbike. In Orlando, you can find this in Diagon Alley, parked outside the bank, or of course, it's what the ride vehicle is based on, on Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. And then the other cool thing is you've got Hagrid's Hut right here, which we... <gasps> There it is. If you listen closely, you can hear a certain boar hound welcoming you to the hut. I'm also hearing werewolves. Should get out of here. A couple other details that some they have in Orlando, some they don't. On Hagrid's doorstep, they've got wood lice for bow truckles. That is a book only until Fantastic Beasts came around. Reference, I choose not to acknowledge Fantastic Beasts, but bow truckles are little guys that lives in trees. They look like sticks and they eat wood lice. Here you've got, uh, uh oh, looks like it, it has escaped the Monster Book of Monsters crate. They have that one in Orlando too. But what I don't remember is in Orlando, 
is this crate that says fire crabs do not shake. Um, I hear some creatures in here, so we're getting out of here. Here's another detail I don't recall seeing in Orlando on this pile of crates and goods. You see that jug? It says flesh eating slug repellent on it. You may recall that in Chamber of Secrets when Harry ends up accidentally in Diagon Alley near Borgen and Burks, he runs into Hagrid and Hagrid said he was there buying flesh eating slug repellent. What were you doing down there then? Me? Oh, I was, um, I was looking for flesh eating slug repellent. So. I could spend literally hours walking around these lands looking at details, and I have, but for now we're going to go and fly to the Hippogriff and then go get my wand. No, bow your head. of the Hippogriff done. It's literally the same ride as it is in Orlando, but it makes me giggle. And for some reason, there's no filming rules here. In Orlando, there's very visible, please do not film signs on the rides, which is why I don't. And the team members will tell you to put your phones away. Here, there are no such signs and no team members tell you to put your phone away. So now I got footage from that, but it is bizarro to be like cresting the top of Hogwarts and then also see Simpsons. We are headed back into Ollivander's. One thing I will say that is very superior in Orlando IMO is that you can't really get near the side of the castle. It's a really bizarre dead end right here. It's not bizarre. That's rude. It's a dead end I'm not used to. So I think you'd have to weave through the extended queue of Forbidden Journey to get a side view of Hogwarts versus like you've got that bridge in Orlando that just leads you right there. But it's definitely much quieter here. It's less crowded here. I think that's the allure of this park in general. So you can have more like intimate wizard moments. Picked up my wand from Ollivander's. I'm gonna find a little quiet corner to open it because I'm, I'm kind of geeking out right now. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, um, okay. <laughs> I know I'm backlit, but Hogwarts is back there. So I just bought a wand at Ollivander's and I got Hermione's wand, which I don't have somehow, even though Hermione is one of my favorite characters and Hermione means a lot to me because as a girl growing up, she was the first girl on screen I saw that was smart and the boys liked her and she was sassy and she could keep up with the boys. And by that, I mean, she, they'd be dead without her. So Hermione reflecting as an adult, Hermione means a lot to me. So I got the Hermione wand and it's extra special because they do something here in Hollywood that they don't do in Florida. Okay, I'm really late, but here in Hollywood, you can get your name engraved on it. Um, I put Molly McAwesome on it because that's kind of what started this whole thing, this whole journey I've been on the last year. Anyway, a lot of people watching this are probably like, that's so cringy that you're, you bought a piece of plastic that's got your name on it in a fictional land about wizards, <laughs> but it just means a lot, so. To personalize a wand to get it engraved, it's a $20 fee on top of the wand cost. Discounts do apply to the actual wand if you have an annual pass. And you can get pretty much any wand engraved, except for a few of them have too much detail, like Sirius Black's has too many carvings on it already, but it's really cool. And wand engraving is something they do not offer in Universal Studios Florida. I don't know if it's because there's too many guests or they just haven't rolled it out there, but it's a really neat kind of special moment to engrave your wand. Obviously, now that I have a wand, we have to do some magic. So cue the spell montage. Alohomora. <gasps> Benite Encantado Silencio Ventus Alohomora Thank <laughs> you. 
I could stay in the wizarding world forever doing all the spells, especially since some are different. Uh, but the last thing I'll point out is they still have remnants of Zonkos attached to Honeydukes in Universal, in, um, in Florida, Zonkos has been completely redone, oh my gosh, to be part of Honeydukes. But my favorite thing up top is they're selling the Portable Swamp, which is a book reference to when Fred and George flee the castle in Order of the Phoenix and leave a swamp there for Umbridge to take care of. It is time now, friends to go see my best friend, Bruce. I don't know if you thought I was talking about someone else, but I definitely was talking about Bruce the shark the entire time. He's on the studio tour, which is a tour of the actual Universal Studios lot. It does close earlier than the rest of the park, so keep that in mind. It closes kind of soon. I wanna make sure I get on the tram. You're also gonna see sections of Fast and the Furious, Supercharged, as well as Kong while on this attraction. It's really, really fun. It's definitely like a highlight and must do when you come to this park. So we're headed there right now, but I am gonna take a little break. Gonna make a quick pause to get a little sneaky snack, and by that I mean lunch, cause I'm very hungry. At Bumblebee Man Taco Truck here in Simpsons area. We have Bumblebee Man Taco Truck, but we don't have all of these options. We don't have the macho nachos in Florida, and I love nachos. So obviously we've got to give that a whirl. My nachos are ready very quickly. These are the carne asada nachos. You get to choose your choice of meat. They've got chicken, carnitas, and carne asada. It's got queso, the meat, fresh jalapenos, pico de gallo, guacamole, sour cream, and then on the side, two different salsas. I'm very excited about this because I love nachos and I'm very hungry. And these look great. Mm. These are pretty good. I mean, they're more or less just theme park nachos, but they're very good. The meat was cooked really well. I tried a little bit on its own. The salsa has a ton of flavor, not a lot of heat. I love all the fresh jalapenos on there. The queso is fine. I wish it was like white queso. Overall, everything's fresh and good. If you are not a theme park goer constantly like I am, I would probably recommend still eating at the Three Broomsticks, but because they have the same menu as we do at home, I, I wanted to try something different and I'm definitely not disappointed. Headed now onto the world famous studio tour. This is about a 45 or so minute experience and it takes you onto the actual working studio of Universal. They just announced as I was walking in that they're shooting Bel Air today. Not Fresh Prince Bel Air with Will Smith. What is it, 1993? No, the Peacock Reboot. They're filming it today, so maybe I'll see someone famous. But this is the signature flagship attraction here at Universal Studios Hollywood. It takes you through scenes of Fast and the Furious Supercharged. It takes you through King Kong 360, which is like Random Skull Island. It takes you through a scene with Jaws, and then it takes you through real working movie sets, as well as former sets, things like War of the Worlds. You're gonna see a whole downed plane that Steven Spielberg used in that movie. You're also gonna go through Jordan Peele's Nope, the set from that film. It's really, really cool. I enjoy this tour every time I go, learn new little fun tidbits about Jurassic Park and Jaws and The Good Place and, and classic Universal horror movies. It's really, really interesting. Couple of things to note about the tour. There are no bathroom breaks on the tour. And again, it's about an hour long. So there are restrooms right down here. Make sure you use them if you need to. And two, you can bring snacks and drink on. There's a little car right there that sells like pretzels, churros, and some canned beers. I went ahead and grabbed myself a beer in the Duff Beer Garden before I left. I asked if they had anything unique here to Hollywood. And they actually said this, while not a Duff branded beer, is an IPA made at a local LA brewery. So of course I had to try that, fantastic. A little hoppy, not fruity IPA, which I normally go for, but it's not super, super hoppy and overwhelming. I think it's gonna be perfect to accompany me on this tour, and I can't wait. I hear Bruce is there. Fire effects, if any, any water effects. We ask for no smoking of any kind, and for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks. But it was also in Jurassic Park, the scene where the girl gets sneezed on by the dinosaur. Jurassic Park, 
And I'm going to use it to show you how anywhere in our country. No. Absolutely not. Eric's just kind of sitting no. there. Directed by Quentin Tarantino. So that we're in San Francisco, but it's that's at Union Square. That's it, I'm still on your nose. Uh. Oh no, the barrel! The barrel! Oh, fire! It's quiet on the movie set, but I'll marry him. Here he comes, here he comes! There he is! Hi, Bruce! Hi, Buster! Hey, Bestie! Chief Brody's house is up here on the, there it is, Chief Brody's house. Boom! Yay! Go to the yard. And then, of course, Brian's car from Furious 7. Do you know, if you guys are tired from walking the theme park all day long, need a place to stay, let me know. And he loves redoing the place, too. He just put in jacuzzi tubs, marble showers, and to die for you. Hey, Norman, how's it going? Doing a lot of extras, I've noticed. And he's making you dead. Call my mama, I found the man of my dreams. Is that Dakota family? Yes, this is a real 747, purchase and destroy for the production. It's uh, that is all designed around the vision of the but then you have to ship it from the airplane graveyard out in the Mojave Desert to the middle of Los Angeles. That's another two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> in just a moment, we'll be taking you to the actual sets of his new sci-fi thriller, Nope, starring Daniel Kaluuya, Amy Palmer, and Stephen Young. Over. You know how long I took to iron this shirt, man? I'm, I'm not. For nobody. Pop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise, we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. I'm let's put this novice out. Let's go, Cookie Puss! wrapped up my studio tour. I really think that is such a fun attraction. It's like four attractions in one. You get a studio tour, you get King Kong 360 in 3D, which is basically Skull Island Reign of Kong. You get Fast and the Furious Supercharged, and you get the uh, earthquake, the big one scene, along with a scene from Jaws. You get to see movie sets, TV sets. I think that is a must do when you're here. And now I'm finally headed down to the lower lot to see the mummy. These are those wild escalators I was talking about. Down here on the lower lot, this is where you're gonna find Revenge of the Mummy, the ride, Transformers 3D. You can meet the Transformers like you can in Orlando. This is also where you'll find the Jurassic World section and coming soon, Super Nintendo World.
This park is a fever dream. I went down the bizarro 80s mall staircase escalators and I ended up down here on the lower lot and there's <laughs> Triceratops out and then I met Blue the Raptor. So everything is wild. Um, I love it here. <laughs> Julia, during a walk past. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ratchet Encounter. My name is Jennifer. I have a dinosaur nest here. Have a very different experience. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day on the island. Did just feed her, but are you hungry, Blue? Oh, she's good. She's good. Part of our safety protocol and procedure is to make sure that she does stay well fed. As you approach, Hi, ladies and gentlemen, please take as many photographs and as much video documentation of yourself with Blue as possible. <laughs> You also have a very aggressive bag on. I do. It's very aggressive. I think it's kind of jawsome, but... Hi, Blue. You know, she does love to attack the color red. Okay. That actually is a fake. Bye, <laughs> okay, hey, hey, easy. Anyway, Blue's meet and greet is a little bit different, and every time I saw pictures of it, I thought, this looks sillier than Orlando, because you can see her feet. It's better when she's behind a bush. But no, she's equally scary here. Also, the Triceratops was amazing. Now, again, I'm legitimately sad that the Jurassic World water ride is closed, which you will never hear me say about another water ride in my entire life, but it is amazing. It's got the Indominus Rex. It's one of the best animatronics I've ever seen. More reason to come back. Good thing we bought annual passes. Now down here again, this is also where you've got Transformers the Ride 3D. It is the same as the one in Orlando. And you've also got Revenge of the Mummy. Slightly different than the one in Orlando. Only a 10 minute wait. Obviously we're gonna go. Time for Revenge of the Mummy. It does have a 48 inch height requirement and it does have lockers similar to many of the attractions at Universal Studios Florida. So we are gonna go ahead and grab a free locker for all my stuff. But I believe I can take my phone with me, get some cue footage, maybe some ride footage. Road Revenge of the Mummy. The main differences here is that one, the story is different. In Florida, you are on a movie set of the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies, and here it's just like you're in the Mummy movies where the Mummy's trying to get you. I think it's a little bit shorter here, um, but I'm glad we're not allowed to film on that ride because you would have absolutely cared my pure terror when you see the bugs and here the bugs actually tickle your ankles like that old scene do you, anyone remember honey i shrunk the audience at epcot where it was like the mice were supposed to tickle your feet they do that here and i wasn't expecting it and i screamed i do think the ride's better in universal it's definitely longer it's more thrilling there's some better effects i think but it's always a fun coaster to do the mummy and now i see yet another dinosaur to say hello to theropod dinosaurs are pretty interesting. You probably know a lot more theropod dinosaurs. You guys have probably heard of Velociraptor. There's one in front of you right now. Also, Tyrannosaurus rex. Anybody heard of a Tyrannosaurus rex? You have? So, a Tyrannosaurus rex, also another theropod. Now, there's another theropod dinosaur that you probably are more familiar with than you realize. Has anybody heard of a chicken before? Mm, yes. You've of, oh, you've heard of chickens. Delicious. Oh, okay. Have you guys heard of turkeys? Yeah. Ducks? Yeah! Oh my gosh, so you guys have heard of a lot of theropod dinosaurs. So this is actually Sierra. Uh, Echo is a three-year-old now, so she is Hi, fully Sierra. grown. Sierra is six months old, <laughs> although she looks similar to the way Echo looked when she was this age. <laughs> nice to meet you, but Sierra. Girl. Here's the thing. I am a grown adult. I have a college degree. I consider myself somewhat intelligent, but if I don't believe that's a real dinosaur, if I do not feel like that is a real dinosaur, every time I meet a dinosaur at any universal dinosaur encounter, whether it be the baby, whether it be the raptor, whether it be that triceratops we just saw, hands down one of the best character style experiences anywhere are these dinosaurs. They are so cool. I could watch them all day, but instead let's get more snacks. Maybe a drink. Made it back up to the upper lot. There's Phineas Q. Butterfat's ice cream parlor is looking good, but it is like legitimately 40 something, 50 something degrees right now. I'm very cold. So we'll have to save that for my next visit along with Jurassic World. Definitely excited to come back and ride that. But there has been another snack I've seen a couple places throughout the park that I really want to try. So I think we'll wrap by getting that. One last look at Hogsmeade. Goodbye, I love you. This park is just 
so bizarro, but I really like it. Ending the day with one more snack. This park isn't open very long. It was only open 10 to 6 today. I got here 11 something, had a nice leisurely day, but we're gonna have one more snack before we go. I got the everything seasoning pretzel. Now, I love everything but the bagel seasoning. I get it at Trader Joe's. I literally put it on everything. And I've seen this pretzel at carts all over the place. When I finally ordered it at one of the snack stands, I was delighted that she brushed butter on it and coated it in the seasoning to order. So let's try this. That's a delicious pretzel. Now, I wish I had some beer cheese to dip it into. They had the like fake processed cheese you could get. I don't love that stuff, so I didn't go for that, but it's a warm, buttery pretzel. I love the everything but the bagel seasoning. Just a little bit unique and fun. They also have stuffed pretzels, like the cream cheese stuffed, jalapeno stuffed, and big pretzels. Can't go wrong with a hot pretzel, so a good snack to end our wonderful day. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my day here at Universal Studios Hollywood. I had a great day at this very laid back park, perfect for luxuriating. I reunited with a good friend, Bruce the Shark, on the Universal Studios tram tour. I was delighted by so many characters, including Frankenstein's monster, the Bride of Frankenstein, my favorite troll guy, Diamond, and so many dinosaurs. I even got to spend some time in my favorite theme park land, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, got a new custom wand, and did some magic there. I hope you had fun following along here at Universal Studios Hollywood. This is definitely a very unique theme park in the sense of it, but I really enjoy it. We will definitely be back to this park. Gotta get on Jurassic World again. Continue exploring Super Nintendo World. So let me know what your favorite thing about this park is down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Now go watch our Super Nintendo World video. Bye.